got to be somebody that knows this. So you go to the experts and ask them. And so I ask all these people one after the other, and none of them had it. None of them. And I was getting really freaked about that. That's when I first started saying, they don't know. Nobody really knows. This whole thing is a big sham. This whole thing is a big sham. That's Kerry Mullis, the inventor of the hyper-popular RT-PCR test that Big Pharma and the biotechs are capitalizing on. Guess what he's saying is a big sham. You need to stay tuned, because everybody needs to see this. <laughs> The brand new designs for the day are Planet of the LARPs and Planet of the Sheep because apparently it is possible to be so open-minded that your brains fall out. Available while supplies last, links in the description. We've been talking a lot about Kerry Mullis. Kerry Mullis is the inventor of the RT-PCR test. That's reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction test. And the PCR test is being used all the time, 500,000 times a day, according to the Trump administration. And I've seen as high as $750,000, 750,000 times a day, just in the United States, just in the United States, guys. I did a little math, 500,000 tests a day, just in the US times a minimum of $43 per test for reimbursement under the CARES Act through Medicare is $21.5 million dollars every single day that's just for the rt pcr test in the united states they want to ramp that up they want to make it so that every time you go to work you have to be tested you don't get to work that day unless you test negative according to the rt pcr test so i thought it'd be a good idea if we listen with our own ears from the mouth of the creator of the rt pcr test and i found i haven't watched i've only watched like the first minute and a half but i thought it was what he was saying was pretty interesting about aids this is called why i began questioning hiv and i'm going to leave the link in the chat room before we start this so you can have this for your coronavirus file because i got a big coronavirus file and it's growing this is carrie mullis the creator of the rt pcr test for which he received a Nobel Peace Prize in 1993. Check this out. No, Brian, not the truth. The first time I really questioned it, I was working on a project where we were measuring HIV in people's blood at this place called uh, Specialty Laboratories in Santa Monica. I was just an, a, a consultant there. And I came in about three days a month and we were working on that. And at some point we needed to re up our, our grant from the NIH to work on that, and I had to write it. And so the first line of that was, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. And I wrote that, and then I said, well, I need a paper, some kind of scientific paper, to reference that statement. Because when you make a, scientific, a statement like that, that's like a fact, you need to say, here's how come I know that, right? You put a little one. If it's the first statement you've made, and then you put down at the bottom of the paper, you have a one, and you say, here's a paper by somebody that describes why that statement is true, All right? And so I said, to, I said well, well, what's that? I don't know. Let me think about it. What is that paper? Who do I go to for that? And I looked around. I asked a couple of virologists at that company, and they said, no, you don't have to reference that. I said, I have to reference that because I, I don't know where that came from. How do I know that? And it turned out that nobody. Looks like he felt like he had to reference it because he has something called a conscience. He has character and he's not an order follower. If he's going to make a statement like that, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. This guy wants some facts. He wants some evidence. That's what scientists do, right? He knew it. There wasn't a scientific reference, like a, a paper that somebody has submitted with like experimental data in it and like logical discussion and said, Here's how come we know that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. There was nothing out there like that. Nothing. So it sounds to me like in order for them to get the NIH grant, they were just going to say whatever it took to get that grant. To hell with the facts. Just put down that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. Don't question it. Don't try to look for research. Don't try to footnote it. Just put it down there and they're going to give us the grant. Just shut up, Carrie. Amazing, man. Amazing. You know what the sad part about this is? This, this man is no longer with us. He's dead. 
And it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. He, he was, uh, it makes you wonder if he was killed so that they could co-opt his RT-PCR test and have it mass produced so whoever's producing it can make a grip of money every single day. Right here, the interviewer asks, can you tell me about your experience when you met Luc Montagnier for the first time? Now, it's important to note that Luc Montagnier is the French virologist and joint recipient of the 2008 Nobel Peace Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discovery of the HIV retrovirus. By the time I met Luc Montagnier, I had met a lot of AIDS researchers at meetings, and I had always gone up to them. If they, if they talked like they knew about H, HIV and AIDS, I always went up to them afterwards and I said, where can I find a scientific reference that I can use for my, remember I said I had a sentence there, it said HIV is the probable cause of AIDS and I needed to have that backed up by something before I could write it and submit it. And I went around, I asked a whole lot of people, I said, well, the people, you know, I can't find it. I, at first I looked for it, you know, just in, in like computer searching kind of stuff like that, but then I said, there's got to be somebody that knows this. So you go to the experts and ask them. And so I asked all these people one after the other and none of them had it. None of them. And I was getting really freaked about that. That's when I first started saying, they don't know. Nobody really knows. This whole thing is a big sham. It's ridiculous. Holy crap, maybe this is why this guy is dead. Ridiculous. But then finally Montagnier came to a, there was a, a special little seminar down in San Diego where an old friend of Robert Gallo's Flossie Wongstall was opening up a Department of AIDS Research down at San Diego. They had big, lots of money involved, federal money, and they had Montagnier come there and give a talk. And after that, they had a little wine and cheese thing, and I went over to Montagnier afterwards, and I said, uh, Dr. Montagnier, I, 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 have a, I can't find a uh, reference. Like, who... I can't find a reference to go with the statement, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. I, I'm sure you can help me. And he, he knew that he probably should be able to help me. And he said, well, why don't you quote this new work? This, and by new, he meant like something that came out this year. Right? This new work about a, 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 a virus that can kill uh, monkeys or I think it was not monkeys, it was like uh, something related to monkeys, some kind of a baby, a little ape. And, and I had read that and I said that didn't, it was like supposedly going to be a model system for studying AIDS, that somebody had figured out some kind of retrovirus that passing it back and forth between various mammals, they could, prob they could finally put it into chimpanzees and kill them. And it killed them in about a week and it didn't kill them in any, there was nothing like AIDS there. You know, it, it doesn't kill you in a week. It was just it's totally ridiculous. It, none of the symptoms were the same. And I said, I said, well, you know, I read that. Let me show you something. There's an information shelf. They call it an information shelf underneath this video that's been provided to us by YouTube. And look what it says here. AIDS, by name of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, transmissible disease of the immune system caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. So basically they're saying AIDS is caused by HIV. And Carrie Mullis, is the, the creator of the RT-PCR test, is saying that for him to say HIV is the probable hey, cause of AIDS, he good? had a big problem with that because he couldn't find any documentation. He couldn't any, find any it in any of the medical white papers. He couldn't substantiate that with evidence. He had a problem saying HIV is the probable cause of AIDS, but the Encyclopedia Britannica and Alphabet Inc., Inc. which controls Google, which controls YouTube, says AIDS is caused by HIV. Is caused, not is the probable cause, so a true scientist had a problem saying HIV is the probable cause of AIDS, but uh, Google has no problem saying no, AIDS is the cause of, uh, of is caused by HIV. Amazing, man. So there's the difference between somebody who's got character, somebody who's got a conscience, and somebody who cares about truth, and a top shelf authoritative source like Google, YouTube, Encyclopedia Britannica, Wikipedia saying definitively, yes, AIDS is caused by HIV. Amazing. 
that paper, and I didn't, I didn't see any connection between that and AIDS, and I and that's, and I, I don't think that would be a real. I wouldn't want to use that as a reference, and. Uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I know he walked away. Oh, no, before he told me about that paper, he said, why don't you use the NIH, like the, the CDC report? And I said, well, I looked at that, and that was not a scientific paper. And then he said, what about this other thing, this, this, this like paper that had just come out about a month before, and, and it, a lot of fanfare associated with that paper, but it was total crap. It was like, yeah, if you get $2 million, you can figure out how to kill a primate with a retrovirus. So what? Doesn't have anything to do with AIDS. It didn't look like AIDS. It didn't smell like AIDS. It wasn't AIDS. It was just like got a retrovirus that can kill a chimpanzee. So what? So I I didn't get any more out of him. He walked away after that. And the people like they were thinking he should come up with a better answer than that, but he couldn't. And that's, he just turned around and walked away. I really thought he'd have an answer. I really did. I mean, that was my last, I was right at the edge of my, my faith in the system, but I thought Montagnier will know why he thinks HIV causes it, and he'll tell me. He'll say, because of this study, you know, but he didn't have that. Think about the gravity of this. Luc Montagnier, the guy who discovered the HIV retrovirus, could not provide any evidence that satisfied Carrie Mullis' simple question of where is the proof that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. But the fact checkers at Google are somehow able to boldly assert that AIDS is absolutely caused by HIV. Just let that sink in. But I thought Montagnier will know why he thinks HIV causes it, and he'll tell me. He'll say, because of this study, you know, but he didn't have that. So Carrie Mullis goes to the top in that specific field of HIV being the probable cause of AIDS, and he couldn't get the answer at the top because they didn't have the answer. And the reason they don't have the answer is because they're incentivized not to get the answer. It's all a shell game. It's a, this is a dog and, medical dog and pony show. None of those guys have that. And that's why they're so, they're so weird, you know? That's why they don't want dissent. They don't want people like me walking up and asking them those kind of questions. And they're willing to like go to great lengths to prevent that. They're out on a limb. I wouldn't want to be there with them. Again, because he has character. He doesn't want to go out on a limb. If he doesn't have evidence, he's not going to write it. He's not going to be dishonest. But so many people are out there on the take. That's why the two investigative probes you should have in any criminal investigation, one is a directive and one is the question. The directive is follow the money. The question is who benefits. And when you find out, when you, when you follow the money trail and you find out who benefits, you're going to find a whole lot of criminal activity because those people are going to do a lot of things to make that money up to and including some extremely gross and immoral things. Okay, before you go anywhere, a lot of people have asked me if they can get a shirt from the store with the design on the back. Let me show you real quick what you can do within the store as far as self-editing your own design that you can put on any shirt, hoodie, mug, phone case, whatever. Pick out any design from the store, then select any item. And guys, there are hundreds of items to choose from. Hats, beanies, bags, buttons, men's items, women's items, stuff for kids, and even pets. I'll just select this shirt right here. You can change the item color to whatever you want. Hit this little pencil editing tool right here and then click on customize. You can enlarge, shrink, or reposition the design on any item. You can also click over here to the left on designs and add any design you want. Matter of fact, you can put as many designs as you want on the front or on the back of the shirt. Or you can click on text and add some customized lettering. With the lettering, you can change the font, change the font color, increase the size, and you can even bend the text. And check this out. If you want a design or lettering on the back or on the sides, just click on where you want your design or text, click on the design or text tool, or you can even upload your own design. It only increases the price of the item a couple bucks. And you can do this on any item that you select. The store link is in the description and in the pinned comment. 
Your purchase gets you a kick-ass design and supports the channel while it helps me create more content. Leave your thoughts about this video for the world and the Google Thought Police in the comments section below.